Go on then, Arch, we've got to go. We went to be um, presenting the theatre programme of uh, the Night Show Show. So, we're on our way. You okay? Everybody, Hello. and welcome to the third edition of Sideshow Show. Show. Um, on tonight's programme, we're going to be talking to Elena Popova and Dan Green, who are both um, artists working in the city and have both had an active invol involvement in uh, the Sideshow programme, and Cathy Fawcett, who is the manager <laughs> of Leicester Contemporary Art Gallery and a very keen art fan. Um, we, we, we are also going to be um, featuring uh, an interview with Lisa Lefebvre and Tom Morton, who sadly couldn't make it today. Oh, and we're also going to be reviewing um, The Other Interior, a piece by Sarah Duffy. Um, the review was done by Richard Lewandowski. Okay, if you didn't notice, we've got light now. <laughs> but anyway, so I'd just like to now introduce you to... Um, an interview that we did yesterday with Lisa Lefebvre and Tom Morton, the current uh, curators of the British Arts Show 7 in the days of the Comet. Um, we uh, went out and asked viewers um, of the British Arts Show to kind of, uh, if they had any questions for Tom and Lisa, um, and that formed the basis of our interview. So over to the interview. <laughs> food for thought in that interview, I thought. <laughs> Maybe um, I might ask some of you in the audience for some questions or responses in a minute. But first of all, I'd like to introduce you to my first guest, Cathy Forster. Um, Cathy, what I was hoping that you would talk about maybe is, is in, in the first instance is to respond to mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. some of the things that Lisa and Tom um, talked about with, in, in their interview and also maybe to talk about um, your engagement with the Bichot Show mm -hmm. um, as a visitor or what you thought of it. Yeah, um, I've strictly been a consumer but I've enjoyed that experience. Okay, so yeah, so what did you think of um, I mean, it, it was kind of interesting in terms of the kind of questions, the kind of ki the kinds of questions that we got, and I think it was uh, kind of interesting to see their responses to that. They, they, I think at some points it became kind of it was kind of a slightly defensive. Yeah, there was a, there was a certain amount of shifting around, <laughs> certainly, which um, I, I think you were asked some uh, some good questions. Uh, I, I have to say that having had no particular preconceptions on the British Art Show 7, so I went in there and I hugely enjoyed myself. Um, I, I had a really good time with this. I'm absolutely gutted that I missed Sue Tompkins' performance yesterday because she's actually one of my favourite artists. 
I was unfortunately called to other events in Leicester, okay. so I couldn't, couldn't see it. Um, but no, I've had a really good time with it. So it, can you can you expand on that a little bit in terms of yep. why is it being so enjoyable? What um, the kind of yep. I, I, I really loved the way that the castle was kind of reconfigured, um, particularly the, the kind of the main, I don't know what it's called, the great, great gallery there. The, the, the long gallery. Yeah, the long gallery, that's it, which really looked like a kind of an army of Scotters had taken over for the duration. Um, and you just, you just don't see that. I, I, I thought it was um, just a brilliant reuse of that space. Um, I really liked Spartacus's piece in there. Um, I think Spartacus is a really great artist, but I certainly had some fears about how removing the performative elements of her work and just putting a backdrop, if you like, in there might work. But actually, I think it looks fabulous with the ziggurat next to it. Well, I think actually what's interesting um, is that I think with her work particularly, I you know I know uh, her performance work kind of yeah. uh, uh, you know it's, it's it's again I think she is an artist that I think uh, I brought up yesterday as someone who is kind of has tread. Uh, um, she's kind of been shown quite kind of a lot recently. She's had a reasonable amount of exposure and she's done a really great but still notorious performance at Freeze recently. So yeah, she's had a fair amount of exposure. But, so and so did was your was your expectation kind of was it like was that a pleasant surprise? It, it was actually um, certainly I, as I say I, I had some fears about how that might transmute to um, a gallery space just missing all the performance stuff. But actually, I think just because you have these certain preconceptions about how the Long Gallery is going to look, and um, I've only looked, seen it over the years I've been in Nottingham, go through certain permutations. Um, and this is the most messy, the most chaotic, the most destructive I've seen it. Um, and I, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Mm, I mean, I think, uh, it's a, I think it's a really impressive yeah, sculptural object. Indeed. I think it really yeah, commands yeah. the space, actually. Yeah, and I, I loved today seeing the um, gallery assistants or attendants, or whatever they're called, uh, messing around with Nathan Manor's vomiting figure. That there was some sort of problem with the liquid not coming <laughs> forward. No, there was a problem. Oh, really there, was a, there was a problem yesterday. Was there really? Oh, yeah, I was well, trying. Well, I, was, problems. I was trying to watch the film, and, and there was a very yeah. heated discussion about. In which what in which ways to to uh, press the tube? That, that, that's it. Yeah, well, there, there was talk of an airlock today. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah my, my distraction was entirely taken away from the film, which was full of uh, bizarre, brutal stuff happening. So this little sort of vignettes around the the vomiting heads, and it, it's little moments like that that really bring the show alive for me. And um, so certainly circulating around the different venues, Nottingham's been full of these wonderful moments. And what have you thought? What, what did you think to the other venues? I really enjoyed again the nuance exchange. Some brilliant film work there. Um, I think everybody's really loved the uh, the Mockley clock piece. Uh, but I really, really loved the Elizabeth um, Price kind of death metal take on consumerism. Um, again, this t t today going around it again. I loved seeing the Christmas craft fair there at the nuance exchange, and I, I thought that that kind of extrapolated from the Elizabeth Price take on the oddness of things. Um, I love the fact that in the cafe there was this young man, heavily bearded, uh, knitting, well, doing this huge bit of knitting. I, I don't know why he was there and what he was doing exactly, um, but he almost looked like he'd knitted his beard. And so, um, I, I just having just seen the Elizabeth Price piece, I really thought, you know, isn't life odd? I, I, I'm, I was kind of intrigued to kind of know why they put all the film in that particular space. It felt like it kind of ghettoised. Uh, film or video. That's, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> but it, 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 it seemed like Possibly there was a the suggestion that venue might be somewhere in the future, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, just, I just, I found that quite odd. Um, and then obviously, what about the third venue? How, were, were there Nothing any Nothing contemporary, any there were opulence and splendours. Um, I particularly liked the Carla Black cow pad. Another way of describing it. Um, I, I, I really didn't like it. I, I, I loved it. it it's, it's, you know, she, she likes Melanie Klein, so do I. Um, and this is kind of like this pre-verbal sort of messiness about it. It's very Robert Smithson. I don't know. I liked it. Lots of people disliked it. I gather. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was really um, dissatisfied. I suppose. I what what aspect of the cow pattern was dissatisfied you? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't ordered enough, or it wasn't. It, it wasn't, certainly wasn't. It, ordered, it wasn't yeah. beautiful enough. It wasn't. I, I found it tragically beautiful. No, I, I, I wanted it to be, <laughs> but it wasn't. But I, I mean, I, I much preferred the other piece actually. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, the other piece. Um, that felt that felt more poetic, yeah, and more yeah, ephemeral, yeah. you know, ephemeral, and it had that kind of 
there was some, I, you know, and I kind of, uh, maybe it's just because it was pink. Um, yeah, pink is lovely. Um, yeah. And I, I love those little Wolfman Tillman's tables with those really curious kind of Velcro objects. Yeah. Um, and insights into contemporary life, which and are things I didn't know about. Yeah. Carnage.com, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. People are living out there and I'm missing out. Oh, what did you think about, I mean, in terms of some of the questions to, Lee, to Lisa and Tom about this idea of maybe the, some of the work is overly theorised or kind of, there's that kind of... I, I have to say I'm, I'm a complete addict for theory, okay. so you're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> um, I love theory. Um, I, I even bought, uh, well, I almost bought some Wittgenstein in with me, actually. Okay. So, but, so uh, but excessive theory is but, very much to me. But in terms of that notion of the kind of, of... Do you think it? Pre do you think it? It kind of prefaced that over <coughs> over visual, or do you think? I think there was a great deal of literature in British Art Show Seven, and I think the literary was certainly uh, pressing on the the visual matter, if you like. Mm. Personally, I like that, but it was almost giving you quite an obscure library of books that you needed to go away and read. Um, whether or not you actually want to go away and read H.G. Wells or uh, some of the more obscure novels mentioned in the catalogue, I don't know. It's, okay. uh, it's entirely up to you, I suppose. Yeah. And then, I mean, in the past, um, obviously, the British art shows have, um, in a way, the selection uh, or the. Be careful the now, Alex said the last one. Well, well, the pro <laughs> well, the process of selection seems to be more. Um, Kind of, it's not so at the forefront. Whereas I think with the preface of the subtitle, the idea of in the days of the comet, it felt like the the, the selectors or the curators of this one were specific, kind of specifically wanted their voices to be heard or to to have a presence. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think it is very much a curated show, um, and there was a kind of thematizing going on there. I, I really enjoyed the theme. Um, is, that, is, that, is that a way forward for the British Arts Show, do you think? I, I think it's a natural step to one side. I don't know if it is a way forward. I, I think they saw, they looked at the incommensurable model that we're in and thought there's no way of summing this up and sounding sensible, so let's take a step to one side and do something that's about fictional narratives and madness and the lack of logic in the world, and, and that seems a very logical response to me. Uh, it may not be what the next set of curators try to do there, because we, after all, could be in an entirely different scenario in mm. five years' time. We could all be populist beggars, really, couldn't we? Absolutely. What do you think of the way that Sideshow kind of has evolved in relation to the British Art Show? How? I think that's been fascinating. Um, unfortunately, I've been kind of on the periphery of it due to being pulled into events in Leicester. But Sideshow five or four years ago um, was very, very interesting, but it was more, it felt at the time like a, almost like a club that a lot of people didn't know about. Um, a club that was completely fascinating and seemed to spend a lot of time meeting in the, the Moot pub in Snenson. Um, but this time it's felt like it's folded outwards in a very successful way. There's a sense of it being much more of a platform for a cluster of communities or a constellation of, of, of different artist groups and different artist constituencies. Um, and that probably reflects the way the Nottingham scene's developed in a very organic, um, a very interesting way. It's just a much, it's, it's, it's a set of clusters of scenes where it's just really just one or two scenes last time. Um, I want to come and ask you some questions. Uh, right. Come on then, follow me. You're right, Alge. So, tell me what you thought of Tom and Lisa's uh, um, kind of interview. I think they were right to, um, to say that, you know, with regards to making a survey and show and, and how you go about something like that on such a huge scale, that kind of criticism is always given with things like documents uh, and any biennial and, and the British Archer, of course. So I guess they, they were, you know, I kind of agree with them, really. Um, I think it, to a degree, it felt like the usual suspects, in a way. Um, and with some of the works that were chosen, uh, I kind of knew what I was, well, I, knew, you know, I was expecting something I I got what I expected, yeah. um, and I would like to have felt a bit more surprised. I, I did feel that I do like the idea that they did say it was a personal selection, not a survey. Uh, I think you know, if curators have got anything, if they've got, they're not just going to be you know train spotters. 
It's nice to have their personalities imposed on the show, so let's let's keep keep like that. Like, make it personal. So it's not a survey. It's not you know all useful suspects. There's lots of stuff I didn't know about. You know, there's stuff I didn't know about. But um, you know, so that's what I enjoyed. I did like the way they stressed that the fact that it was their their choice. You know, they had made it like that. So yeah. good for them. Yeah. I was wondering if it is such a personal show. Does it really have the right to have? So much behind it. I mean, remember, it's a touring show, so it's carrying on. What if what gives them the right to have such a personal selection um, in regards to a one-off, a one-off? I think I was like whether I agree that it's personal. Yeah. It feels like it's part of a of the kind of. It, but it does feel like it's about a start, it has a certain currency. It fits into the kind of being alley art market that's yeah. been taken those those regular customers and I think Well uh, and there are there are names that you would uh, you know, that's in in, a, in essence there's a kind of expectation that, that you will see certain artists and, and, and they they you know, I think they were true to form. It felt like, you know, uh spot, spot I know I've gone on about spot, but part of this chat wind is it, it, there's this kind of sense that she's doing something which is kind of dynamic and it is a kind of, there is something kind of interesting about it in relation to kind of uh, what's happening now but it just, I just felt like there's a saturation of, of her practice at the moment and I would have liked to have seen are there other people who are doing that, are there other kinds of practices which play with performance or? I think there's just, um, because there's so much behind it and it's, it's kind of a British art show and I think they've, they've obviously tried to sidestep and dodge that and they have subtitled it but I think there's almost a, uh, an expectation, um, if it is going to be a British art show, that it could really it could have been the days of the Comet exhibition at Nottingham, mm. and people got happy. But I think it was got much more expectation because it, it had to be a touring show that somehow is representative of Britain at this then, moment. Well, but what do you think about the idea that you know, in terms of it being representative, they they do acknowledge that most of the artists or the majority of artists selected are from Glasgow, Edinburgh, or London. I think um, I think that's where you have the merit in something like sideshow. And obviously, what's going to happen when in Glasgow is there is going to be a fringe festival attached to that. And because um, really, all all the art writing and um, stuff is over. Art reviews are going to cover by Sharp Show again, and it's still going on for the next year. Or so yeah. so you know what else is left for the big Sharp Show really? As far as we're concerned, and a large people have yet to see it. But they've already read what everything that's gone on there, so they're, they're not going to talk. They're not going to be talking about the Christian Martley clock for the next year and a half as it's going around the country. It's, well, it's going to have to be the French festivals that are going on in Glasgow and Plymouth that will all the, the art front spaces will be built attach on to the British Art Show, and that's where the interesting stuff I think for most of us is going to happen because we've seen it now. You know, so what we're going to do for the yeah. yeah. What did you make of the of the subtitle? When they say it's a motif, it's it's not. For a lot of people, I feel like you need what was. It's not a navigation tool because you need the little book. Absolutely, absolutely. You don't. You don't need that all, title no. and yourself. You need your little guide. Well, unless unless what you take with you is not the book, but is the title, and what that then opens up for you in terms of its suggestion. So in the days of the comic, what's that mean for you? Mm. If you take that with you, but then maybe that then becomes too. Kind of, I don't know. Maybe that's then a, a, a difficult because then. We all have our own way into that. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um. Um, Kathy, do you have any, any final comments you would like to make in regards to your experience of the show? <laughs> um, I think one of the things I have enjoyed about the marketing. Um, in, in the days, the comments, we keep saying the, the posts in the days of the comments, and then on bus shelves, it's like those actual bus shelves, you can see it next to the Police Federation's poster about how crime is down by North and Nottingham. <laughs> it's rather like the two have become a composite image, <laughs> and I keep thinking about people who don't know what the short show is and think in the days of the comments, crime is down by 50% in Nottingham. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Well, on that note, on uh, that note, I think we should. Uh, and um, thank Cathy Fawcett for... Um, now we're going to go um, to... We're going to view the, uh, a review by um, uh, Richard Lewandowski. I, I know that I've said that right, but I'm sorry, I apologise. Um, 
his review of the other interior by Sarah Duffy, um, a, a member of Six and Sevens, and this is a com a, a, one of the commissions for Sideshow. Okay, uh, take it away. I hope you enjoyed that review. As one of the 12 people who hasn't been able to experience Sarah Duffy's piece, it was really interesting to see, kind of, to see that and to kind of have some sense of um, what you might encounter. Um, maybe we can talk about that with our next kind of guests. Um, can we all please welcome um, Yelena Popova and Dan Green. Um, <laughs> Uh, y Yelena and Dan are obviously both practicing artists uh, within the city. They have both participated um, in uh, kind of sideshow uh, side events, um, and we'll, we'll be talking about that in a minute. But first of all, maybe I can get you to kind of respond to the review. What did you make of that? Because there was such a limited um, availability, we didn't want to sort of take up those slots. Um, however, I've heard a lot about it from from Sarah and being um, sort of being party to a lot of her deliberations leading up to it, and, and uh, it's quite interesting to hear a perspective from somebody who, who was there and who you know who um, who experienced it. Um, I know that the uh, you know the influences and so on, especially Murakami and the Lynch, um, <coughs> were really important actually in bringing out that idea of what is potentially of a, well of a hotel room, which is you know, a nothing space, but yet potentially the, the number of people who've been there before and who haven't experienced the same room as you in the same way or um, be quite a fascinating sort of idea to, to delve into, really. Uh, it feels like a really ambitious uh, piece of work. Um, and I, I, it's a shame that not more of us could engage with it. Um, do you think that's kind of limiting, in a way, to that it could only be seen on 12 occasions or that obviously you had to pay Kind of say yes. how much to participate, yeah. you know, to kind of to, to kind of take up that opportunity. Yeah. Well, in, I mean, in a sense, it's a shame that more people couldn't experience it. Um, of course, it is because you know, especially for Sarah, you make a piece of work, you want people to experience it. That's that's what it's there for. But at the same time, I think that exclusivity kind of mm -hmm. adds something. In in, well, that's obviously in a way, yeah, well, that, I mean, that's, uh, a, that's <coughs> an implicit part yeah. of what she set up. The parameters of I mean, it, it was precise, and it is. You know that there are things that happen in the right order mm. at the right time, and, and um, I suppose knowing a bit of that orchestration behind it, kind of in, in a way, means I can't be completely impartial about about um, how I would respond to it if I was there. Um, but uh, I'm quite interested in the, in, in the fact that if, if you have something which not a lot of people can experience, and it does get talked about, and then it's touched on in the mm. in the video, you know, does that then kind of breed its own? sort of um, idea, you know, what, what's the potential for the work beyond what happened and the way people talk about it? But uh, in a way, I, I kind of think, from what, for, you know, if you talk about this idea of something kind of leading on through word of mouth, I mean, I, I imagine that piece kind of has been kind of really difficult to, some, to kind of document. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in, in essence, is it is well if you you know it's a bit like the kind of reference to Tina Segal and those kind of mm -hmm. artists who who are kind of dealing with those kinds of ideas of performance and live and kind of how then you kind of document that or kind of or or choose not to. So then so then I, I think with someone like Tina Segal or Gregor Schneider, if you didn't get to see um, D Family Schneider, then you only have the story, the mythology of of what others tell you, of kind of, they kind of create this kind of context for you. Um, so there's, there's obviously some kind of, kind of uh, I would imagine there's some kind of interest in that. Because, because otherwise it would be something that anyone could kind of encounter whenever they wanted to. But tell, tell, tell us a little bit about your project, Gods and Rockers. Um, well, Gods and Rockers was really, sort of, um, really wanted to look at ideas of uh, belief and ritual and idolatry. Um, and I think Dan Graham's uh, film, Rock My Religion, was in some ways the centrepiece of it in that it was a work that I really wanted to show. Um, and from that, driven something uh, kind of came up about music. We asked David Bland if he'd like to show a couple of 
of videos and, and he said yes, which is fantastic. Um, so we had a video called Crossroads, another one called Five Rows of Soul, so looking at ideas of pilgrimage and trying to find, I guess in some ways trying to find authenticity, which I think runs through all the three works. Um, and, and the third, the third, which was actually the first, the first, first event was uh, we invited Ben Judd to do a performance and he brought to Shaman and a psychic medium to, to go around to the alternative tours of the uh, British art show um, at Nottingham Contemporary, which was a very interesting um, afternoon, day, it was morning, afternoon, yeah. Why has it been a valuable experience for both of you to participate in Sideshow? Or to, I mean, mm. it feels like you, 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 you've mm. kind of done a number of projects, mm. and so what was the, what was the draw? What was the, what was the thing that made you want to kind of get involved or to participate? Well, it's just the richness of the scene, the art scene in Nottingham, and so, so many things happening at the same time, and people do support each other and follow each other's actions, and so it's, it's really great. So, mm. um, I must say, I study in London, I spend four days yeah, in London, yeah. but um, I come for the weekend and I usually try to go out and see yeah, you're, things. You're, you're currently so I see more in Nottingham than I, I'm able to see in London really? because yeah, I have to do stuff and I have to work and yeah, yeah. study. And so um, this was really amazing the last couple of months. You can hardly have a day off on the weekend. Um, and Dan, what about you? What, what, was, what was the reason to kind of want to kind of was it about, because obviously this is a kind of curatorial project, and yeah. tell me about um, kind of what was the impetus to kind of <coughs> get, to get involved and to start to think about putting something on the Sideshow? I think, I think when, um, because the British Art Show was first talked about when I was still at the university, mm -hmm. about it being here, and not in contemporary specifically, was the first thing was said to us in the first year, this great thing's going to happen in it. In a few years, and I think that we, in some ways, this was a point which we, we all stayed for, in a way. Um, I know that's certainly had an impact on, on my decision. Well, as, it, as in sixties and seventies. Yeah, um, I mean, there's plenty of other, you yeah, know, other things there. Um, and I think that it's something we wanted to be part of, and we wanted to be a big part of, and we wanted to, you know, we wanted to be something where we thought about sideshow sixties and sevens or one of the things we thought about because mm -hmm. because we participated as fully as we could. Um, and getting to the commissions was a huge part of that and a huge thing for us really. It's allowed us to go way beyond um, what we could have done. And, f and for me, I think it was, you know, it was, it was, here's a point where a lot of stuff's happening. Do I want my name in there? Do I want to be in the mix? Um, and it, it was just a really good, good way of making myself, you know, do something and challenge my, well, I've not really curated before, so it was, a, it was quite a challenge. And do, do you feel like it has been a platform? Do you feel like it has been a platform for your practices to be involved in such a do you think that's a kind of? Do you think there's a currency there to be involved? To kind of, in terms of that, you know, does it feel rich? Does I it feel it's vibrant? It's more to that than just single practices. It's, it's the whole scene and the whole relationships between people, which are um, equally important as somebody's also single practice. So uh, you build up contacts and you build up um, um, people around you and um, the projects which I mean, are possible and I mean, kind of grow out of. In terms of uh, sideshow being a kind of uh, a, the, the fringe event to the British Art Show, do you think it could exist outside of that? Do you think it could? Do you think it, this could be something that uh, happens? We should just carry on, definitely. Would you <laughs> the do same pace. <laughs> I wish. Um, I'm sure if there was, a, I'm sure there was funding, that'd be great. But obviously, be but obviously we don't. We don't know. Yeah. Funding is a big issue um, in terms of you know arts funding being being slashed. But how can it? How can it be maintained? Do you think? How can that kind of? Well, but the series of projects we've been involved in, shows we put up, they were completely free and not so much funded, no. or really minimal funding. Yeah. But it was still very um, interesting and um, fruitful for for us and hopefully for some. So, else. so do you think that you know? Do you think that sideshow could have another in incarnation in a couple of years, or do oh, you think yeah. without without that kind of hanging itself on the British Art Show? Do you think that was a kind of do you think it was, I mean, did, did, did they, did they, were they, were they good bedfellows? Did they sit together well, do you think? Or do you think they've been too kind of distinctly... I think the tension and kind of competition is quite good. Um, mm. If the British Art Show hadn't have happened mm. and Sideshow had existed on its own, mm. would you have wanted to get involved? Oh well, yes, I think so. I mean, I think, I think Sideshow would have had more of a struggle to, to be as, as big as it has been, to, what? to attract funding, for example. Like, you know, I, I'm sure mm. um, to attract because the British Art Show have 
consistently mention Sideshow as well, you know, which has been fantastic. That's mm. great. Mm. And vice versa, of course. But well, it's, it's also interesting that you, you, you were able to, I mean, yourself was able to kind of secure lots of contemporary as a, yeah. as a venue yeah, for well, one well, of your Ben, ben went out and, and did that, and, um, which was great. And it was really good that they were you know, supportive of it, actually, which is which really nice. And, and we're quite happy. And I know there has been a relationship between those within the British Arts Show and those sort of at the top of Sideshow to, to, you know, to make sure there is sort of mutual ability, mutual, um, that's not the right thing to say at all, but a mutual sort of respect for each other mm -hmm. that works so we, you know, they're trying not to have clashes mm -hmm. and so on, um, which is a good thing, I think, um, because we all want people to, you know, to, to encounter what, what they can. Do you think its legacy will be able to kind of, uh, you know, we have this, obviously we have this legacy document, we have the fact that it's mm -hmm. it's it's existed and it's this is the second it's in second incarnation, mm -hmm. and I, I am intrigued to know whether it could it, could it, it you know, um, we've got nothing contemporary we've got the New Art Exchange we've got these kind of quite big venues so maybe maybe it doesn't have to hang itself mm -hmm. on being a kind of brother or sister to the to the British Art Show maybe Sad Show, you know, is uh, maybe it should be I don't know. Show show. So show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this idea of kind of being kind of a, a, a subsidiary or a kind of an add on, maybe it could exist on its own or under its own steam. But uh, do you think that could happen? Do you I think, think that's the, the big issue with the name, if there's going to be one, is that if you want to continue, really you need to continue with the branding. You know, mm -hmm. people, you know, someone else could take on what has been done and, and continue it. Um, so in, in a couple to, of years, so we've then, got to wait. We've got to wait five years for that. Well, I'm not suggesting that. I think it, you know, because I think it's something that's happened again, and it, you know, every every sort of annual, biennial, whatever, it's, it's started somewhere. Which was grown from humble beginnings, isn't it? You know, what, I'm sure the you know the Edinburgh Fringe is growing from quite humble beginnings. You know, it's uh, it's a trajectory, and it's and it's been a massive boost to have British Archer this time to. And do you, to and do you think? That. Do you think that there's that vibrancy to sustain that to kind of develop that? I mean, obviously, we've got the kind of currently we've got the kind of quite um, some of our kind of established spaces within the city, independent spaces are either closing or kind of uh, evolving into other kinds of you know kind of they're, they're changing their kind of remits. So, if, do you think the space for kind of younger, kind of, like yourself, younger kind of uh, artists to kind of move into those spaces to kind of do you think there's things that are missing? Do you think there's something that we no. It's, it's interesting with, you know, um, two of the sort of exhibition spaces, I suppose, um, changing um, in that one of the reasons we, we never took on a, a permanent space because we decided there was enough of them. Um, and we also didn't want to be tied to it, but, but there's enough of those. You know, we can always find somewhere to show work or to show, have an event. It's not a problem. And there's plenty of vacant spaces in the city that, that aren't being used mm -hmm. currently. Um, I wonder if maybe perhaps turn it on the head would something like Sideshow happen again in two years to maintain the vibrancy of the city in that sense would it give people a reason to, to stay, stay to, to carry on to raise their game again and yeah. to, to look forward for two years and then well also as well then maybe those space, because <coughs> I, in a sense I, it's going to be interesting that uh, the kind of the kind of established groups within the city or the more kind of those I mean obviously we're in Tether but Tether has uh, programmed a very extensive program. Um, do you think it would have been good to have the kind of same of those other, of other spaces like Backlit? Uh, there are other spaces that haven't, don't seem to have kind of generated or kind of utilised that in, in a sense. They could have, you know, in terms of the program, we have these venues within the city. Do you think they, they were underutilised or do you think that they should have kind of raised their game maybe to kind of, to have, pro to kind of, more extensive it's probably down to funding and have enough well, support. Yeah, well. I wonder about the fact that it, whether it, whether the city has been utilised in all its guises during such uh, whether we it's kind of been kind of we've had we've, we have Thorsby Street as a very mm. prominent space in the city that mm. seems to have done you know really exciting you know they've got a very exciting program tether exciting mm. program and I wonder about those other venues I wonder about uh, Surface Gallery and Bonington Gallery and mm. how visible they've been as spaces or as venues within the city mm. I don't know what you think about that. 
Well, there was a lot happening, and you can't quite, you know, have the same level of different words of people. You know, it's just, I think it's normal that there is a um, variety of different approaches and the way people expose themselves, and that's, that's quite good. The question for me is, um, what was better, to have a really um, well-paced and reach an interesting program of events in Nottingham happening like all over, mm -hmm. uh, during the whole year, or have like three, two months, which quite exhausting, I yes. must say. It was yeah. really exhausting to follow the talk. Absolutely. So, are we having it really dense, or maybe we pace it? Well, what would you prefer? I would prefer like a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, absolutely. So, so, it kind of goes, and it's the same vibe as... I'm, I'm sure, that, yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's a lot, there's a, probably a lot of people who would echo that, yeah. in the sense that it has been... So, it doesn't have to be a festival, it has to be a style of... Yeah, it's been, it, I mean, I think there's, de there's definitely yeah. that sense that it's been really difficult to get to everything, to kind of engage with everything, because it has been in such a short, kind of concentrated kind of time Yeah, now span. we know that there's so many things happening, or could happen, or, you know, there's so many great people doing wonderful things. Mm. It could just be a little bit more... Um, and what do you think about, I mean, again, maybe the city has changed since, since Nottingham Contemporary has arrived, since the New York Exchange has arrived. Okay. When I first got here, there was Moots, and there was Angel Road, mm -hmm. and Angel Road was brilliant. I loved Angel. I miss Angel Road a lot. Oh, it was fantastic. Um, and Moot did stuff every now and then, and nobody was quite sure where they were for, for the first you know, few months we were here. And then we all end up doing, sort of volunteering there and, and doing bits. And then Teller started a programme and eventually moved here. And, you know, gradually things sort of built up. And I think that's, that's been a, a real kind of... Um, <coughs> reason for us to stay to sort of try and be involved but it's been um it feels like we're at the peak in a way now could, could we have much more you know is there have we got to a peak and maybe on that note we should we should draw this to a close <laughs> so i'd just like to thank my guests you live over dan green and kathy Fawcett, and it's a goodbye from me and it's a goodbye from archie <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> everybody <laughs>